Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Health and Wellness Sports. This is Dr. Lewis. And uh, we apologize for coming in a little late. We appreciate those of you who have been patient with us. It was due to un- unavoidable circumstances. But yes, welcome back to this platform. This is the Health and Wellness Sport. And this shall be interesting because today I'm going to take you through our relationship with food. How do we relate with food? The emotional aspect of us getting addicted to food. I'm going to talk about the vegan diets. Are they beneficial? I'm going to talk about the alkaline diets and the acidic foods. What is their relationship with our system and our health in general? But I want you to notice that there are so many people who are talking about the alkaline diets, the keto diets, uh, what is the vegan diets. Others are talking about the carnivore diets and uh, they're telling you different things about all these diets. And at some point, it gets confusing. You can't know which is the best diet for you. Now, this is a life for you because this will actually explain in details what you need and why you need it. It will also explain to you if at all alkaline diets are advocated for. Why? Why do we need to acidify the system? Why do we we need to alkalinize the system if at all? Uh, that is what is needed. So this will be a very interesting uh, live, and I hope by the end of this live you'll be able to make up your mind about these diets. So meanwhile, allow me to bring in my people on YouTube. Uh, thank you so much for joining in already on TikTok. So let me just set up uh, my YouTube studios so that we can start this. Now prepare your questions for me about the alkaline diets, and the acidic diets. You've heard about it. You've heard about uh, people who have cancer, they should alkanize their system to get better. Have you heard about that? Have you heard about diseases growing faster and proliferating even easier in acidic pH? Have you heard about that? Good. We are here to just make sure that you get all the information about those diets. What is your relationship with food? You know, you can be interacting with us through the comment section and tell us what is your relationship with food do you think you're a food addict do you think uh, you cannot do without food do you think fasting can make you die those are the questions that we'll be asking in this channel in this platform tonight so good morning good afternoon and good evening from wherever you're watching us from of course i am dr lewis muchile obunde from the health and wellness sport this is a platform that brings healthcare to your doorstep this is a platform that bridges the gap between healthcare and the general public so that you not only become a patient, you are a client, you understand healthcare better, and we simply act or we simply play the role of somebody who guides you through lifestyle changes. So sometimes uh, it's, it's difficult to refer to me as a doctor because what I do is way more, and sometimes it's controversial to doctors because that is the syllabus. What I do is I guide you and I teach you how to change your lifestyle, and through that, you become a better doctor because I empower you to be the better doctor for yourself. Your body speaks to you. Your body does not speak to anybody. It's you who chooses to speak your symptoms to the doctor, and then the doctor places a bet with those symptoms. And once the best is, bet is confirmed, we are good to go. I send you to the laboratory. You take tests, and when you come back, I am sure of a disease. And then I put you on drugs. So therefore, this is a channel that actually plays the role of making sure that you are informed and you make informed choices when you're trying to consume healthcare. Allow me to just put this on board. Good. So once again, everybody's joining in and I love this. I love this. On my YouTube channel, as always, I see Sophie is in the building. I see Wanapai Kape. I see Mickey in the building. I see Kabiru Muraya. Ah, Sparrow, how are you? Welcome on board, bro. I see Eunice Mudoni. I see Halima Hussein, Joab Oboge. Neema Solomon, Ann Mashari, Augustine Odindo, Hannah Kimani, Lago, Steve. All of you are in the building. Mildred Okola. I also see uh, Ann Mashari. I see Daisy Koich. I see Lillian Kimani. Oh my goodness, all of you are here, present, like never before. I also see Helen Kinua, I see Baby Rachel, I see Vinny Amaherno, I see Elvis Juma, Samuel Gitaiga, 
And all of you who are here, Jail, I see you, I see Monica Gadoni, I see Peter Nakumi, I see Ingrid Magado, I see Jacqueline Kimani, I see Saruni Dakuni, and there's a new gentleman here. I see Joseph Onaya, I see Robert Mabuire, The Hub, and Jones Bet. Welcome on board, all of you. Thank you so much for joining in. It's interesting. It shall be interesting. Health and wellness sport is where you recover. Health and wellness sport is where you get your health in order. This is where you question your doctor. This is where you get informed decisions. You just either consume healthcare or make sure that any time you choose to consume healthcare, you are well informed. Remember, we are under an oath. So what we do is guided by the principles of medicine. Okay, so welcome on board. This is your life. Now, remember this before we even start. I always tell you this that on 17th of this month, all the way to 26th of this month, we will be providing our physical consultation services in Nairobi. Be present. Come on board, let's have those conversations about health. Come with those questions that you always wanted to ask your doctor. Book your consultations through the contact that I'm about to put across. Also, there's a weight loss journey or group or cohort that is going to start on 15th of this month. Be sure to use that same same contact to actually book your slot. It's a three months program, a very good program. You will learn a lot from it. You will work out with information and above all, you will understand to maintain the weight that you've just lost. So allow me to put that contact on board. So that anybody who is interested can use that contact to contact us. If you're outside the country, possibly use the code plus 254 before uh, starting that contact. So 070707 again then 4722. Good. Allow me to pin that contact here on TikTok. I also pin it on YouTube. On YouTube on my videos that contact is always available though. So you can if you miss it out on these lives, you can always use that contact on my YouTube channel. And guys, the support that you're coding us on YouTube is just tremendous. It's amazing. We love that. We appreciate you because you are loyal supporters. Now, what is your relationship with food? That's the question that I'm asking you tonight. The question for tonight is, what is your relationship with food? Are you a food addict? You consider yourself somebody who can not fast because you fast, you get into problems. Are you? So tell us about that in the comment section. If you're a food addict, simply remember that anytime you fight anything, it persists. So stop fighting it and simply fix it. Accept it. Accept that this is the position that I am in right now and I have to fix it. So antidote to resistance is always acceptance. Once you accept it, you start making it easier for yourself. Most of the people who want to lose weight, they will always complain. That I'm trying to lose weight, but it's not possible. But the reality is, it's not like it's not possible. It's like in your head, you've already convinced yourself that it's not possible. You start from the mind. And then number two, of course, you're doing things without understanding. You're doing things, and then little did you know uh, that you have hormonal imbalances, the thyroid issues, and you have to fix them before you start a journey to uh, lose weight. The good thing is, when you're trying to lose weight, when you start with the mind, and, uh, and, the, and the best thing is about, about weight loss is those foods that will help you fix the thyroid and balance your hormones are the same same foods that will help you lose the weight. Okay? So we're going to go through this. We're going to talk about the keto diets. We're going to talk about the carnivore diets. We're going to talk about the vegan diets. What are they? What are they? Uh, which role are they playing in our systems? Do we really need them? Do we really need to classify foods into these uh, categories? So we want to make up our minds this night. That from tomorrow as we start eating at noon, we are going to make a very sane decision on that pledge. So three points will be involved here. Number one will be your emotions with food. What is the social aspect of food? And we know that most of us use food as a social aspect. It's only nowadays that people have gone to the phones and they have lost touch with reality. Traditional days, we used to sit on a table, we sit in a circle and enjoy the food, have small conversations here and there, and it was a bonding session. It wasn't just about the eating, it's about the bonding session. So food was used as a social uh, social, like social thing, a social activity. So when you're eating, you're bonding with the family, and it becomes good. And when you're visited by, by, by your relatives, you're always trying to make them the best food. I'm putting best in quotes. The best food, according to them. Where, where I come from, uh, the visitor will always come with what he will eat. So if they bring you a chapati flour, then you make them chapati, okay? <laughs> I don't know if that happens to everyone, but eh, that's how I was raised, though. And then, uh, here I am, I'm telling people, hey, when you come to my place when I'm fasting, we are all fasting. <laughs> that's 
that's how I ended up losing some friends. When you come to my place when I am fasting, imagine me with a 48 hour fast. And you come and visit me. And now I have to stand, go make you a good meal, and then you enjoy that meal. And then as you enjoy it, <laughs> sometimes it comes out as though I'm very mean, my friends. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think that's a mean move, though? <laughs> like, when I'm fasting, we have to fast. That's how I create a network that is actually, <laughs> I'm accountable to. There's no way I'm fasting and my friends are not fasting. The reality is, if five of your friends are fat, you are the sixth one. You are the sixth one. If three of your friends have never fasted, of course, how will you fast? How will you convince them that I cannot go for Shere? It's, an, it's impossible. So you have to actually be accountable to some individuals. So one, we're going to talk about the emotional aspect of foods. Is this, are these emotions controlled by hormones? Why is it that women during uh, the menstrual cycle, at a certain level in the menstrual cycle, they start craving for certain foods? Is it that these cravings were brought about by hormones during menstrual cycle or pregnancy? Or is it that these women actually go to addiction earlier on before even the pregnancy, and the pregnancy just exposed their bad eating habits and their food addiction? Which is which? So that's what we're going to talk about. Number two, we're going to talk about food itself. Why do we prefer the processed and ultra-processed foods instead of just going for the whole foods? Why do you think that some foods taste bad to you and they taste so good to somebody else? Why do you think that you find sugar being sweet and salt being bitter? Did somebody mess your mind up? Did somebody just... And you see, when you tell somebody to take water, they will tell you, I don't like water. Or if you tell somebody to eat the liver, I don't like the liver, the taste. The reality is, it's not like you don't like the liver. It's not that the liver has a bad taste. It's just that you are exposed to other foods that actually messed up your taste buds. You cannot taste foods in their natural forms. And now, of course, the liver has to pay the price. The boiled eggs have to pay the price. You've heard of people when you tell them, uh, carbohydrates, uh, beans are carbohydrates. So now they have to eat beans and eggs and vegetables. They start telling you, that is me creating a bomb already. Just a bomb waiting to... <laughs> that I eat beans and eggs. And even boiled eggs plus beans. What kind of bomb am I preparing? Like, who will sit in my environment? <laughs> Thank you so much, Chess. Who will sit in my environment when I've eaten boiled eggs and beans? <laughs> now you're blaming the boiled eggs and the beans because of your messed up gut. Simply fix the gut and enjoy those two foods. There are people who eat them without uh, creating that bomb. They don't. It's you, it's your gut that is messed up. So fix the gut. And number three, we're going to talk about activity. Why do I insist that you have to move? Why do you have to have some activity in your house? Nowadays, people work from home. We started long ago working from home during the COVID season, and it has become a norm. So nobody wants to move. Everybody is seated in the home with their Wi-Fi and their internet. Nothing, no activity, nothing at all. Your children adapt the same lifestyle because they want you to be their role model. So once they follow you, they simply adapt, they simply uh, imitate what you do, and they become. So when I tell you, you only inherit, your children will only inherit bad eating and lifestyle conditions from you, bad diets from you that will cause them diseases, and they don't inherit diseases. You start telling me, oh, Dr. no, but the book says genetics. But my doctor says this is genetical. No, you're not fat because of genetics. You're fat because you ate yourself to that point. Where were the genes 20 years ago? Where were the genes 40 years ago when men used to be tall and lean? Where were the genes? Where were the genes when men were men? Where there were the genes when when women used to give birth naturally. And now, because of genes, they have to go for a cesarean session. They just give birth. Where did nature take a turn? Did we change nature? Did we try to change nature? Which is very hard. You can't change nature because it will whip you hard. So did we try to change things so that nature fits in our schedule? It is impossible. Okay, so three things for today. Emotions, food, and activity. Motion. Why should we be in motion all the time? Now, we can never talk about food without talking about how the body functions. What are the pH levels of the foods? Remember, we are going to talk about the alkaline diets, and we are also going to talk about the acidic diets. What are their roles? So, therefore, we cannot talk about these things without talking about the pH scale. So, to begin with, what is a pH scale? This is just a measure of how hydrogen ions dissociate. For example, if you take an acid, hydrochloric acid, you dissolve it in water. It forms an aqueous solution where the hydrogen ions are released in that water. 
So when you release those hydrogen ions, the extent at which these hydrogen ions are released in water, that is the measure of pH. If you have a base and you dissolve it in water, you're releasing hydroxyl ion, the OH ions. Now this is always a chemistry, a biology class, and a reminder. So you don't need to cram because I'll be here every other time to remind you your basic biology. So simply enjoy it. Don't have to cram anything. So now we have a pH scale. On the extreme right and on the extreme left, you see that line that we draw that has starts from 1 all the way to 14, and in the middle is 7. So in the middle way there is 7, that is a neutral pH. Neutral pH, water exists there. As we go further to the right, we go to the alkaline. So the higher we go in the numbers, the more alkaline those things become. For example, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 14. They will, from Moving from 7 all the way to 14, that is increasing the alkalinity, the basicity of that product or that food. And moving from 7 going downwards, 5, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The lower you go with the pH scale, the higher the acid, or the more concentrated the acid. And that's why on number one on the scale is the most concentrated acid on earth that is called sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. If you pour sulfuric acid on your skin, you will simply turn into carbon. Very dark skin, it will burn you like crazy. It burns even the bones and converts the bones into something else. A dark mass because it is highly corrosive to your system. As we come up from the way from 2 to 3, that is hydrochloric acid, another corrosive acid. Now, this acid is what is in your stomach, my friends. Those people who tell me hyperacidity or I'm suffering from acidity, there is nothing like that. Your stomach was designed to be highly acidic and concentrated. So when you tell me I'm suffering from acidity, I'm actually telling you, hey, congratulations, you're not suffering. You're actually healthy because those people who are suffering from gastric ulcers, gastritis, the reflux disease, stomach issues, development of gut microorganisms that don't reside in the stomach that give them diseases, even food poisoning, are people who have neutralized that stomach acid through antacids, through alcohol, through sugar, and all these bad foods, and even excess water without using salt. So once you neutralize that acid pH in the stomach, you start raising the pH from 2 headed to 5. Now remember this. Once you neutralize that stomach pH, you have messed up the environment in the stomach. So you will be unable to digest protein because protein require pepsin. They require a strong HCL in the stomach for you to digest them. So now, in your stomach, you have that pH specifically to help you digest proteins. How amazing is that? So God designed that stomach perfectly to actually assist you in digestion of protein. Now this goes to our famous vegan diet supporters. If you choose to support vegan diets, simply use that and tell us the benefits of the vegan diets. Don't demonize the carnivore diets. Do not. Why? Because you cannot tell somebody that meat cannot be digested in the stomach when we all know that the stomach is intentionally acidic to digest meat. The stomach is not acidic to digest vegetables. No. The stomach is acidic to digest protein tears those larger molecules of protein into smaller molecules that can be now chopped off easily by the pancreatic proteases to make amino acids that you can easily absorb. And that's amino acids are the one that will be utilized in the system. So when you're trying to defend vegan-based diets, do not try to demonize the meats by telling a lie. So we have started, already we have started uh, correcting and demystifying the meats. If you're a kin student, you already know now, you should eat meat. <laughs> that is not me saying you should emphasize on carnivore diets and drop the vegan diets. We will get to that conclusion at the end of the video. So now, as you grow into that pH, at around 2.6, now listen to this. That dark soda that you take, including that diet soda that you take, has a pH of around 2.6 to 3. Hello? <laughs> when you're taking that soda, it has a pH of around 2.6 to 3, highly and strongly acidic. Guess what it's going to do to your teeth? It's going to destroy your teeth, my brother. My sister is going to destroy that dental formula. You're going, to, you're going to have a very false smell as you continue taking that soda, even the diet soda. So stay away from soda and energy drinks. They are all under pH of around 2.6 all the way to 3 point something.
okay and now as we continue growing into that ph we will get to a ph that is of 5.5 that is slightly acidic okay 5.5 we still have an acid there but it's slightly acidic so it's not as strong as those ones that are one two and rest but we are at 5.5 now guess what at ph of 5.5 this is where most diseases most bacterial diseases fungal diseases like yeast cancers this is their ph this is where they survive the most once you just understood that statement you start knowing that we really need to concentrate that stomach acid to kill these things we really need a certain type of ph in our system to start clearing these diseases but as long as your ph plays between 5.5 hey you you will not survive cancer because you will create an environment for cancer to grow you will not survive uh, fungal diseases the yeast that's why women have a lot of recurrent yeast infections you will not survive uh, bacterial infections okay because they love this and if you realize ladies there was a saying that or there was a notion that when your boyfriend is coming over i keep on repeating this because i want you to think it indefinitely when your boyfriend is coming over during the weekend i don't encourage men to move <laughs> that direction but when you are either going to your boyfriend or your boyfriend is coming over one thing will happen you want to eat as much pineapples as possible so that when you urinate you're urinating just pineapples and your vagina starts to smell nice that is a mistake why because as you take that fruit as you take that sugar because fruits are sugar as you take that yogurt what you're doing is you're loading your system with sugar and guess what your vagina has a bacteria that is called candida albicans a normal flora when i say normal flora i mean these are bacteria that exists in our system naturally they don't cause any harm like h pylori like candida they don't cause either bacteria fungi or viruses that exist in our systems but do not cause any harm remember our body cells are fewer as compared to the bacterial and microorganism cells that are present in our body so we have more microbes than we have body cells so as you eat that fruit as you take that yogurt that has been sweetened thinking that you're going to cleanse your vagina what you're going to do is yeast infection the fungus really loves sugar because this sugar will help it create a nest for itself a house that it will actually proliferate and cause you more damage so listen to this you eat that fruit you absorb the sugar you drink that yogurt you absorb the sugar fungal infections love sugar they survive in sugar so does cancer so this sugar is the one that will actually start the acidic ph and how does sugar convert things to become acidic that's the major question this is what sugar does when the fungi enjoy this sugar what they produce is uric acid is lactic acid and is acetic acid those are three acids being produced by the fungi now when this fungi produce these three acids what do you expect what do you expect as you eat that fruit hoping that it's rich in vitamins that is going to clean your vagina so that your cookie smells well for your boyfriend guess what is going to happen you're going to produce three acids through those fungi that uh, that reside in your vagina the candida albicans this fungi will enjoy that sugar and then they will start multiplying but above all they will now start producing uric acid acetic acid and lactic acid your guess is as right as mine you start to lower the ph you start moving from 7 headed back towards 5.5 so we are already creating a nest for these fungal diseases to survive that's the reason why as you eat that fruit your infection goes and comes back every time that's why you hardly treat that urinary tract infection that's why you hardly treat that yeast infection you're always scratching your privates now you know again fungi loves very filthy environments so if you keep on wearing those panties that can always hold water like for the polyesters and the nylon panties you keep on using water to clean your privates but you don't dry it well you're actually creating a survival mechanism for those yeast infections So the yeast says enjoy enjoy the foods and by the way did you know that the concentration of the microbes in your gut are the ones that are the first line to sending you into craving for example if you are a carbohydrate addict you will develop microorganisms in the stomach 
that only break down carbohydrates. So all other microorganisms that are enjoying protein diets, fat diets, dead. Now you start having only bacteria that or microorganisms that are interested in you eating carbohydrates. And what is going to happen next? They will always send you into cravings to eat the carbohydrates so that they can enjoy it and give you the lactic acid, the uric acid, and the acetic acid. So as you eat that fruit, hoping that you've gotten the vitamins, you've actually invited the yeast infection. You've actually invited the viral infection, HPV. You've actually invited the cervical issues, cervical cancer, and all that. So stop using pineapples to clean your organs. Stop. You don't need it. And then, at pH of 6.5, remember we are going up. We just started from 1, we went to 2 to 3, we went to uh, 5.5, and now we are at 6.5. Now at 6.5, that's where your cells survive optimally. <laughs> Somebody here is asking me, Dr. how could strike? Hey, my friend. <laughs> where? Hey, 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 hey. If I strike here now, you can imagine how many people will deny information. You people, I will deny a lot of information to you people. That's injustice. I'm not saying I cannot strike. I'm saying, <laughs> of course, I need remuneration and I need a better life for my children. But, yeah, this is what we enjoy doing, right? That's why we are always here. Yesterday it was a ter testimonial Tuesday. I almost said terrific Tuesday. Wah! That's how the food industry has gotten into my head. <laughs> so it was a testimonial Tuesday, and it was awesome. I think we had to cut it short because of time, but it was just awesome. You need to be attending those testimonial Tuesdays. Okay? So this is where you learn. This is the home of healthcare. So anyway, let's continue. As you raise to 6.5, your cells, remember there's a pH of the cell and there's a pH of blood. I will tell you about the blood, but let's talk about the cell. So your cells function optimally at a pH of 6.5. 6.5. 6 is slightly acidic, so your cells love that pH. Now, if you alter that pH by a little bit, let's say you just head towards the basic, you are actually limiting the activation or actualization of, thank you so much, Obilo, of your cellular function. You will actually inhibit optimization or maximization of your cellular activity. Okay? And below the same, you're doing that. If you're taking yourself into acidic environment, pumping your system with acids, what are you doing? You're actually altering the optimization of the function of the cell because cellular organelles function optimally at a pH of 6.5. Hey, Obilo, you're feeling very, very uh, fantabulous today. Thank you so much for those uh, gifts that you're sending us. Thank you. We appreciate I appreciate it. Okay? So at 6.5 is where we need all these things to happen. What can we use to, hunt, to clean our organs? We'll talk about that halima. But fasting does the best. Okay? Fasting does a better job of cleansing your organs. But again, you don't need to clean your vagina because it is the ear and the vagina are self-cleansing organs. You don't need to do anything to them. Don't wash them with soap. Don't spray them with perfumes. Don't do douching. By the time you're thinking of cleaning that organ, it means it has a smell. So it is infected with disease. So what do you do? You need to fix the disease instead of fixing the symptoms. That foul smell is just a symptom. Fix the disease, which is just the sugar. Once you fix the disease, your cookie smells awesome. Awesome. That's what you need. So 6.5 is the normal pH for your cells. Now as we head towards 7, 7 is the neutral pH. That's where water exists. Now we are at the neutral pH and we want to continue growing, growing and knowing where is the most important pH of our system. Now at 7.3 to 7.45, look at that small gap. 7.35 to around 7.45, a very narrow margin. That is the blood pH. So remember this, the cellular pH inside the cell, the pH is slightly acidic. But around the cell, the pH is literally near neutral. I want you to understand that point because I'll use that point to tell you something. So understand this. We've said, thank you, let's go. Hey, my friends. We've said <laughs> that at pH of 6.5, cellular activity and optimization inside the cell Outside the cell is blood, okay, and the fluids. And blood pH is near neutral. So what will happen if you change this blood pH towards 
acidic or towards basic. That's why it gets interesting, and that's where we get the lie of the alkaline diets. Now, anything beyond that pH of 7.4, let's say you're headed towards 8. If you head towards 8, you're going towards the alkaline, the, uh, alkaline pH, right? So when you get to 8, guess what will happen? Your cells will die. When you get to, let's say, 7.2, your cells will die because in relationship to that pH of 7.4, 7.2 is slightly acidic. Even though they still, on the pH scale, they still look on the basic side. But in relationship to that 7.45, when you go lower, you're headed towards the acid. When you go higher, you're headed towards the base. Which means, the higher you go, let's say a pH of 8, that will take you to what we call alkalosis. So your system is basically alkaline. And your cell will definitely die because it will not survive under a, an alkaline medium. They want the external environment. The blood wants to be basically 7.5. So imagine what you're going to do to the cells. Now below the same, same pH of 7.45 or 7.3, because we started in 7.35 all the way to 7.45 as the blood pH. So below 7.35, let's say like around 7.2 or 7.1 or even 6, that is headed towards acidosis. But listen to this. My friends, nature and God are very wise. Those two things, don't play with them. Simply don't play with nature and don't joke with God. You can be an atheist for heaven's sake if you want to. But don't dare mock God or don't dare change what God designed the way it should be. Don't cut off any organ. Don't cut off any tubes. So vasectomy is seniors, kindly. <laughs> Sometimes in heaven you'll be asked, where did you take your, your tubes to? We need it fixed. <laughs> if at all there's a heaven, for those of you who believe, but for us, this is our side of heaven. You are in the best heaven that God created for human beings. So take care of that heaven. When I see somebody eating maybe a sweet and then throwing that paper just aimlessly, I feel so bad. I, I start wondering, you mean you don't even care about nature as much? You have even become worse than an animal because animals don't do that. The only thing they can do is defecate. And defecation is basically fertilizer. But hey, you, who will go and buy fertilizer and then now kill the crops? Okay? Uh, what causes joint pains? Is it acid in meat related to it? We'll talk about that. Hey, come. Hey, kindly let me just note that before I forget. Uh, arthritis and meat. Meat does not cause you arthritis. I'll explain how you get to arthritis. And that's also acidic environment, okay? Good, so I'll explain that. Thank you so much. That That is Black One King for that good question. So uh, if I forget, please be quick to notify me here. Okay? So this is what is happening. If you're headed towards the alkaline pH, remember I told you number one on pH scale, number one is sulfuric acid, strongly concentrated acid. On the other hand, is it hand or end? I've become a cumber. On the other end, 14 is strongly basic. And guess what? At the strongly basic environment, this is where we have the metals, the minerals. For example, calcium is the most alkaline metal that ever existed. So when you're headed towards the basic environment, what you're going to do is you're going to leach calcium from the bone. Why are we leaching calcium from the bone? Because it's highly uh, uh, basic. So we are leaching calcium from the bone because calcium comes out from the bone as calcium and phosphate, that complex. And then, this calcium is the one that is going to try... What is that? Hey, hey. That calcium is going to try and make a normal environment around the cells in blood. So it's going to try and reverse this alkaline environment. That means you're going to weaken the bone. But... Since it's coming in as nature's way of making sure that you have now reversed the alkaline environment, the danger comes in this way. Once you have reversed that, you will now have calcium and phosphorus in blood, what we call hypercalcemia. Okay? When you have hypercalcemia in blood, that is a danger. Because calcium is a metal that is actually used to contract either glands, either cells, or even contract the, the smooth muscles lining your blood vessels. And when those smooth muscles contract, 
the blood vessel narrows. Now look at that. We have achieved a point where you have high calcium in the system because of alkalinity. So those pre preaching about alkaline diets tell us about the leaching of calcium from the bone and the leaching of phosphorus from the bone coming into blood to just normalize the pH. And when they come into the blood, what they do is after you have normalized the situation, nothing is going to happen to this calcium. So they will either be sent back to the bone, but they will not go deeper into the bone. They will be on the surface of the bone. Or they will be deposited in the heart. And when they deposit themselves in the heart, what happens is they are the ones that are responsible for contraction of muscles. Now you have your heart contracting, and that's what we call arrhythmias, abnormal rhythms of the heart. Now you'll have your blood vessel, the smooth blood vessels, uh, uh, blood, uh, the smooth uh, muscles around your blood vessels starting to contract and narrowing your blood vessels. Now you'll have your kidney problems because calcium deposited in the kidneys is responsible for calcium oxalate stones. These are the kidney stones. Nobody is talking about that. Everybody is talking about you eating spinach and spinach causing you the kidney stones. Everybody is talking about eating meat and meat causing you kidney stones. But nobody is telling you that kidney stones are actually calcium oxalate stones. Where are we getting the calcium? The alkaline environment that we create in blood that causes calcium to come from the bone into the blood to just normalize the homeostasis, maintain the normal functioning or the normal environment around cells. That is blood or the fluids. Once that has been normalized, this calcium has nowhere to go. We have now hypercalcemia, and the system has to deposit this calcium somewhere. So it either deposits in heart, uh, heart muscles, you start getting contractions, that is arrhythmias. You start getting this calcium deposited in the kidneys, and you combine them with the oxalates that are coming from nuts, that are coming from, uh, from the spinach. So the oxalates are not the problem. The problem is the calcium that is coming in to combine with these oxalates to form calcium oxalate stones. And we form these stones literally on a daily basis, but they are cleared through urine. They only become a problem when they grow bigger and they block the pathway of urine. And now you start having the pain, start having the infections and kidney problems. This is kidney stones for you. This is hypertension for you. So as you narrow those blood vessels because of their contracting, this is hypertension because now the pressure under which blood has to go through, has to go through that blood vessel has to increase now. And guess what is going to happen to your heart? Your heart is also contracting to make sure that there is a lot of effort given to push this blood through this uh, blood vessel that is narrowing. Now the left ventricle of the heart starts to enlarge. That is what they call in medical terms cardiomegaly, an enlarged heart. Now when you mention cardiomegaly to you, you start being scared. Hey, I have, the doctor told me I have a heart, an enlarged heart. Now guess what is next? I have sold you the fear successfully. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend you one, a drug for hypertension, and guess what? The reason why you take CCBs, calcium channel blockers, aka nifedipine, aka amlodipine, is because you want to block this calcium from getting into the cell. So instead of somebody telling you to simply take magnesium, because magnesium is the one that pumps calcium outside the cells, and to take fatty meats to get vitamin D, because vitamin D and vitamin K2 are the ones that carry this calcium from the blood vessels and deposit them in bones. Somebody keeps on telling you, hey, yeah, well, allow me to take a minute to just relax. Somebody tells you you need a heart surgery now, but you have not fixed the calcium problem. Somebody tells you that you need to take nifedipine, which is a calcium channel blocker. I told you when you're part of this channel, you will understand that the mode of action of drugs can actually lead you to the disease and the cause of that disease. If you're taking nifedipine, it is a calcium channel blocker. If you're taking amlodipine, it is a, a calcium channel blocker. If you're taking a drug that is called verapamil, it is a calcium channel blocker. They block channels that allow calcium to flow inside the cell. The problem is, they are doing a good job, yes, but are they fixing the calcium that is in your blood, that is being deposited on your blood vessel, causing the contraction of the smooth muscles and causing the narrowing of the blood vessel? No, they have not. So they are fixing the symptom. They are fixing this. They are dilating this blood vessel temporarily. But they are not cause, they are not fixing the calcium that is being deposited in this blood vessel wall. So do you have your answers to those drugs that are used for hypertension? Of course you do. So simply tell this person, you can take sea salt because sea salt has magnesium. You can eat nuts. You can eat avocados. They have a lot of magnesium. And the role of magnesium is simply 
to pump calcium outside the cell. So when magnesium goes into the cell, it pumps calcium outside the cell. When it pumps calcium out of the cell, now it's the role of vitamin K2 and it's the role of vitamin D to actually take this calcium and deposit where it belongs, in the bones, so that you have stronger bones and you recover from hypertension. Is it hard to tell somebody that? Do you, have, do you need to put me on seven drugs, a combination of drugs for hypertension? You really need to tell me that I need a surgery for heart disease when the heart is just trying to adapt. The mus you know very well when you go to the gym and lift the bicep, you start growing a bigger bicep. Why? Because it's adapting to the force that you're giving it. So that next time it actually does uh, help you in, in lifting even heavier weights. That's the concept of muscle uh, growth. But you see, this calcium is coming from somewhere. It's coming from you trying to make the system alkaline. But, hey, hey, let me read this to you. This is $19 from Emani Jeans. Thank you so much, doctor. You have helped me reverse H. pylori. Pre-diabetes. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's a super chart. It's amazing. Super chart from Emani Jeans. Thank you so much for $19, my friends. Give me a damn Nishiki. Those are 19 dollars, my friend. Ah, yeah, yeah. You are waiting, Nishika. Watch out. We end the live. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually appreciated. So, let's continue. So, when you're growing that muscle of the heart, you don't need a surgery for the heart because if I remove that heart, I have not fixed the problem. And remember, when we're talking about hypertension, we said these deposits of uh, sugar in this uh, blood vessel, inside the blood vessel, they are corroding that and cholesterol comes in to fix that erosion. When it comes in, it starts to attract cells and you start growing a thicker and narrow blo uh, a thicker blood vessel wall. And now it narrows. Now you've added on calcium to contract it. So actually, you're actually making sure that this blood vessel is always contracting. And as it contracts, you will not recover from hypertension. Therefore, hypertension, you need to drop the calcium that is coming in. You also need to drop the sugar that is causing narrowing and thickening of blood vessel walls. How hard is that? Hello? How hard is that? Do I need a heart surgery? If I've not fixed what caused that heart to start straining? Because the heart was straining and the left ventricle started to grow bigger because it's adapting to the force that it has to pump into the blood vessel. If I go ahead and remove this heart and give you even a new heart, the only problem will be that heart will experience the same conditions. And that's possibly the reason why most of those people who have taken a heart surgery, that risk, they still end up dying after two years of the surgery. Now we understand it better. So calcium channel blockers are actually blocking the channels of calcium. So they are blocking calcium from going into the cell because if calcium goes into the cell, everything starts to contract. The cell starts to contract. The glands starts to contract and release hormones. The heart muscles start to contract and that's hypertension or arrhythmias again your blood vessel smooth uh, smooth blood uh, smooth uh, what are they called smooth muscles that line your blood vessels start to contract and your blood vessel narrows and that's how you start getting all these issues so diets are very important so therefore alkanizing the system can actually land you in more trouble but we have not yet come to the conclusion that alkaline diets are not good so don't be quick to judge let's continue So that's you heading into the alkaline pH. Okay? But, I want you to understand this. That again, the system is designed to actually favor you. Even if you mess it up for the longest period of time, the system is designed to favor you. How? There are two organs that regulate alkalinity and acidity in your system. Two organs. One is the kidneys, the other one is the lungs. Now, when you are running in the gym, you're exercising. Your muscles need oxygen so that they can burn more glucose. But apparently, if you're controlling your breathing, you're going into anaerobic respiration. So you're going to break down glucose under low oxygen. That is anaerobic respiration. If you have oxygen, that is aerobic respiration. So under anaerobic conditions, because now you're running and you're not adapted to just burning, oxygen, uh, burning glucose under low oxygen. So you're going into anaerobic respiration. Guess what you're going to yield? Lactic acid. The one that gives you crampings in the muscles. Lactic acid. 
Lactic acid is an acid. Now this acid is in the system. Before it is deposited in the muscles, start giving you those muscle cramps. It is in your blood. What is happening when you have lactic acid in your blood? Students, what is happening when you are having lactic acid in your blood? We are not moving until we get that answer. What do you think is happening to your system when you are taking, when you are exercising under low oxygen and getting up, uh, getting the lactic acid accumulating in your system? When you start getting those muscle cramps, what do you think is happening to your blood pH? Let's see those of you who have been concentrating here. What do you think is happening to the pH of your blood as you're raising the acid levels? So when you start addressing the root cause, you start understanding. So what is happening is, yes, you're going, no, it's not an alkaline state. You're going to the acidic state because lactic acid is an acid. So you're going into an acidic state, which means you're lowering your pH. Understand this, when you raise your pH, that is al alkalinity. When you lower your pH, that is acidity. So when you produce that lactic acid, the pH is going down. When it goes down, that is acidity. Now remember, at pH of 5.5, .5, which is acidic pH, that is where we have fungi, that's where we have most diseases, and that's why we have cancer. So that's the reason why, for you to get adequate optimization of health, start breathing normally. That's why I tell you to meditate. Exercise breathing techniques when you're in the gym. Breathe through the nose. Enjoy the breathing. Okay? That's why you start breathing faster and heavily. Why? Because your system is actually, the lungs are trying to excrete the carbon dioxide that you're forming in the system because you are under anaerobic conditions. So for you to remove that CO2 and get more oxygen, you have to breathe faster and heavily. So the lungs, that's how they control acidity. So when you have this lactic acid, you breathe faster because this is the acid. This is the acidosis. So the lungs start giving you oxygen so that you remove the CO2 and now you can ease up on acidosis. Because remember, CO2 in blood, you remember the reaction of carbon dioxide with water? Do you remember that? <laughs> this is where it gets complicated, right? When you react CO2 with water, you get weak carbonic acid. Weak carbonic acid. When you get weak carbonic acid, what is happening to your pH of the blood is going down. That is acidic pH. So for you to reverse that, you need to breathe deeply and breathe faster. So that you get the oxygen and you remove the CO2 so that you don't form the weak carbonic acid. Let me remind you of chemistry. When you are told, how does rain cause rusting of your ion sheets? In the atmosphere, we have CO2 and rain is water. When water gets in contact with that CO2, it forms weak carbonic acid. Weak carbonic acid reacts with either, either aluminium to form <coughs> or the ion to form rust. Water also has oxygen, so ion plus oxygen, rusting. Now that's the same concept that is happening. When you're trying to breathe heavily and faster, you're actually trying to get rid of the carbonic acid in blood and then your pH goes back to normal. So that's how your lungs control acidity or acidosis. Organ number two is the famous kidneys. So, before I even move to the kidneys, those of you who smoke cigarettes and affect your lungs with that smoke, stop. Those of you who smoke bang and you think bang is going to change your life for the better, stop. You're going to make a lot of problems. You're going to create a lot of problems in your lungs. You're going to alter the system from actually doing its function. Those lungs are not there to help you do away with the smoke that you're bringing in. Stop feeding your system with smoke. Cigarettes are even written on the warnings. Don't you read the warnings? I like the package of cigarettes in Ethiopia. They actually have somebody who is literally dying. Do you remember that image of that? The first images of HIV patients? The TB patients, the first images that were put on billboards to scare people. Do you remember those images? Those are the images on the packages of cigarettes in Ethiopia. So you, as you take that cigarette, you already know <laughs> that this is what I'm going to look like. <laughs> Apparently, cigarette companies, cigarette companies that make cigarettes, they put a warning on that just avoid, avoid issues. But I wonder how in Kenya, nicotine is illegal, but cigarettes are legal. Uh, am I the one overthinking? <laughs> how is it that nicotine as a pure substance is illegal, 
but cigarettes are legal and do we even have our own cigarette companies the major company that produces cigarettes in kenya is from the uk now do you know that do you now you know right now you understand now you understand <laughs> so as you sit there thinking that our regulatory bodies are coming to change my life they will say they are there to protect me they are not there to protect you you your health is your first wealth they don't care about you they have problems they have to fix we have revenue we need to fix we have taxes that we need to get <laughs> eh if you are a loyal uh, kenyan citizen you need to pay tax therefore those companies <laughs> must exist okay so yeah the other organ that actually helps you to regulate acidity and basicity or acidosis and alkalosis is the kidneys when your system is highly acidic what do the kidneys do they reabsorb bicarbonate ions when they reabsorb bicarbonate ions these bicarbonate ions combines with the hydrogen ions to actually neutralize that ph when you are into a basic environment which means in your system there are so many bicarbonate ions the kidney will either excrete the bicarbonate ions through urine or reabsorb hydrogen ions so that we get that balance yes molly that's the company as the company existed for the longest period of time now they write a very small warning on that cigarette a very small warning that you don't need to care about the warning you simply you take your puff then they lie to you that that filter is going to control the amount of toxins that are going into your system <coughs> it's a lie and cigarettes are very dangerous because cigarettes in you see nicotine in the cigarette actually initiates or activates its own breakdown in the liver so when you take one cigarette just like those smokies and those sausages that you take one is never enough one hour down the line you've broken it down you want another one you want another one and you see how people who are addicts of cigarette you see how they are emotional they get super emotional they are so angry and they only need a cigarette to just lower their tension down once they have done that now they are relaxed they are very friendly i has so much dependence out here run away from that so your kidneys are very important so imagine if you've been consuming sugar causing an acidic environment in your cells because of the fungi that exist in these cells or your organs that have the fungi so you feed them with sugar you get the fungi fungi eats this sugar gives you lactic acid gives you acetic acid and gives you uric acid turns your system into acidosis and then the same same sugar kills the kidneys so therefore the kidneys are unable to control the acidic ph in blood guess what you're going to have problems now also remember as you make the environment around the cells basic you're going to deny yourself the heart muscles potassium so you'll go into hypokalemia that is a heart attack hypokalemia you know how potassium is important in regulation of heart function now you're starting to understand slowly but carefully now i know this is too much information in one night and free information too much free information is toxic to people but the same same information is power to other people so imagine you sitting here for an hour plus and walking out of this session as empty even worse than you came into this session <laughs> at least when you leave this session just remember that doctor who keeps on shouting on those platforms every other time told us not to take sugar at least go walk away with that point that alone is enough you don't need to walk out with any other point don't even cram there the kidneys and the function of the kidneys you don't need it simply know that i said don't eat sugar because sugar is toxic is that so hard to remember my students <laughs> is that so hard to understand it is not and when i say sugar i am actually referring to carbohydrates because carbohydrates are the ones that are broken down to sugar glucose and fructose and the lactose or lactose so when we say sugars we don't mean the table sugar only we mean the sugars that come from carbohydrates of course exceptions of the complex carbohydrates which will always be broken down to sugar also but these ones have fiber and it's tough to break them down so they'll give you a steady flow of energy as compared to the simple sugars the rice the ugali 
the chapati, the bread, the pasta that are broken down so fast and then absorbed fast and causing a spike in glucose, which will give you insulin resistance. That is what we are running away from. My teacher couldn't teach without smoking. Yes, I had a mathematics teacher in primary school also, but this gentleman was brilliant, a very brilliant brain. But the shaking, he couldn't even hold that choke when he was in that shaking motion. So he had to go around the classroom and now take a puff, then press the cigarette, put it in the pocket. Sometimes it burns the pocket and so embarrassing. But he was a brilliant head teacher and a mathematics teacher. But this, <laughs> this, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He used to get so angry and everybody will be whipped until he goes and takes his cigarette. That's when he comes back and he's so friendly. He can even apologize. Did you say a lot of water makes the stomach pH to be low? Now, a low pH is acidic. So start by thinking in that direction. There is no way you can dilute an acid and then you get a low pH. You raise the, you raise the pH. But this is the point. You need a lot of water to dilute that stomach uh, water. That's so much acid salt. You need a lot of water. But of course, according to concentrations and the chemist, when you the higher the volume, the lower the concentration. So when you add the volume, you reduce the concentration to a certain amount. But you see, the body is designed perfectly. When you try to reduce the concentration, the body will produce more acid to just bring back normalcy. So the body is always trying to struggle to bring back normalcy. That's why you have all these organs. That's why you have the liver and the kidneys. So don't worry about taking water. Simply take water. You need hydration. But as you take that water, add a pinch of salt because salt will concentrate your stomach acid and that salt will help you reabsorb reab all that water. About 80% of the drinking water that you've just taken. So you need salt when you're drinking water. But if you just drink water aimlessly, what you're going to do is you're going to flush out electrolytes from, the, from urine. That's why you urinate a very clear urine. So you'll flush out the sodium, you start having a migraine. Therefore, when you drink a lot of water without using salt, you're going to dehydrate yourself. Yes, I just said it. When you drink a lot of water without adding a pinch of salt, you're going to get dehydrated because you're going to flush out sodium. And when you flush out sodium, chlorine follows and water follows. When I'm talking about salt, I'm talking about sodium chloride. Salt is sodium chloride. The rest are just additional. For somebody who has hypertension and for somebody who wants to reverse issues with calcium in the system, you can take sea salt. has a lot of magnesium. You need it. You can take Himalayan pink salt, okay? Those or the Celtic salt. Those are the ones that have have additional minerals. But if you're targeting just the absorption of that water, even table salt is perfect for you. But nowadays, salt is actually uh, adulterated. And have you realized that apple cider vinegar, the ones from that good company that we used to think, uh, is looking actually very diluted? Have you realized that? Most of you will not realize that because most of you don't even take that product. You would rather go into a hotel, sit down and drink dawa. <laughs> eh? Nowadays, dawa is a very famous thing. By the way, let me talk about this dawa thing. A concoction of garlic, a concoction of uh, ginger, lemon juice, no peels, lemon juice, and all that nonsense in one bottle. Then you you busy seated there after eating your cakes. After eating your cakes, now you're seated there drinking that whole two liters of dawa or that bigger cup of dawa and they add honey because they know you're a sugar addict so for you to be addicted to their joint they add in honey you're drinking that dawa thinking that this dawa is going to burn your fat thinking that this dawa is going to change your life for the better and i've seen this all the time people sitting in those restaurants and they ask for dawa no me i don't take sugar me, i don't take tea that has milk me i don't take coffee i i would rather prefer dawa and then they bring you dawa plus honey and you pour all that honey in that dawa and you're thinking that this honey will burn your fat, it will help you reverse diabetes and the weight gain. You're wasting time. It's a waste of your precious time. Dawa is as useless as that uji power. What they keep doing in that uji power is just playing with your psychology. When they tell you now when you take this cup, the bigger cup, ah, your wife will say, your wife will tap out. You're busy there going to take that uji power. You're struggling with the uji power thinking that uji power will give you the erection that you deserve that's a waste of your precious time and money 
they will play with your psychology. So when you go back home, you will actually get an erection because of the mindset, but a very weak erection. Now tomorrow you want to go back and pick something else. There are more of the OG power because you actually got a slight erection. Now when you come back, they add in some uh, some some uh, sildenafil, the erection pill. My friend, you go home and you perform. This is a performance of the year. <laughs> Eh, there's no other than you, my friend. <laughs> and when you get that performance, now it becomes addiction. So you now go there to take that which you're thinking is just Uji. Simply go to the pharmacy then and buy the sildenafil. Instead of just wasting your money on Uji, loading your system with a lot of sugars and glucose and plus a drug. These are lies that you need to see from far. The same same lie that these people who are uh, pretending to be Maasai with the buyus that have the herbs lying to you that if you take this, it is a purgative, it will empty your stomach and you will have a healthy immunity. Now you take one cup and you diarrhea like a river. You want to diarrhea until you diarrhea the lungs. And you're thinking this is the best product. Imagine I just took one cup and I had a whole diarrhea. I actually made a river of diarrhea. This one was cleaning me. They, they tell you when you diarrhea, just know you're burning fat. Just know now the system is cleaning up. My friend, they just added in a purgative called lactulose. <coughs> you need a third, eye, a third eye to see these things. <laughs> yeah? Nowadays, people are disguising themselves as masses, putting on sugars, and selling you these products on the streets. This is a gentleman who has a very big pot belly. He's, he's unable to diarrhea that pot belly out of his rectum. But he wants to prove to you that this one will help him, will help you actually clean your system. Don't be desperate. Don't be desperate. Don't ever be desperate. You can do better. You are better at these things. You see them when they are coming. But if you don't have a third eye, if you're always the guy who comes on this life, you just sit there. No liking, no nothing, no learning. You're just passing your time because you're under a Wi-Fi. Somebody's Wi-Fi. You have no interest in health information. You just want to listen and then criticize and move out. Bring a debate, my dear friend. Bring a debate. That will be the best option for you, okay? So run away from Uji power, run away from those gut cleansing agents, run away from those purgatives that are they're lying to you, they're going to clean your system. Run away from any product that they're telling you, if you rub on your gut, it will help you uh, burn the fat. It's a lie. It's a serious lie. Let's continue. <laughs> Where? There is fire, right? Kumawakamoto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me read through the comments before we continue. Or do we have something here? Okay, let's see. And by the way, just before I forget, you see, we were mentioning about the effects of this calcium that is being deposited in the heart to give you arrhythmias, being deposited in your blood vessel to give you uh, hypertension, being deposited in your kidneys to give you kidney stones. It is also deposited in the eye to give you something that is called cataracts. This is when your grandparents or your father goes to hospitals and they are told they have to peel off the eyes. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> how, how was I forgetting that? I have seen people going to hospitals and they are told, we are going to remove that web. They call it a web. Let's go and peel this web. And when you peel it, you recover your eyesight. Now they peel it once, you even see more blood vision. Next time you are back to the hospital, they want to peel another one. And tell you now you have these are <laughs> these people were unable to treat your eye problems that are caused by sugar and caused by the calcium that is being deposited in the eye. And now those are two eyes that were they were unable to treat. And now they want to give you two more eyes in form of spectacle so that you have four. Now you have four useless eyes. Okay, they were unable to treat two. Now you have four. So instead of just treating the cause, they want to add you two more eyes. Like, I am tired. I am tired. I used to think, gone are the days that I used to think that people who put on spectacles are very bright. <laughs> Did you have the same notion? That we used to believe that those people who put on spectacles, my friend, these are the brightest. <laughs> yeah? The brightest. Of in your class, that gentleman who put on spectacles actually looked the brightest. And like the word looked. That lady who used to put on spectacles all the time, they're wiping the spectacles. They're the ones who looked brighter. 
<laughs> Only now that we are realizing, hey, hey, the system set them up for failure. <laughs> so those heart diseases that you're getting is the calcium trying to alkalinize the system. So now let's question the alkalinity of the of the food, sir. Okay. So each and every part of your system, starting from the mouth, has a different pH. You get to the stomach, you have an acidic pH. So tell me if we are all thinking. Remember we said around the cells, or in blood, we need a pH of 7.35 to about 7.45. Near, near, near neutral. And then inside the cell, we need a pH of 6. Basically five, which is acidic, a slightly acidic environment, right? So if you remember those two, now let's question the alkaline diets. They tell you that making the system alkaline will actually protect you from cancer, from diseases, from mucus, and from whatever what else, and from um, from the yeast infection. Very true because those diseases survive under the acidic pH of 5.5. So at least we have an answer for that one. However, telling me that alkaline diets will actually change my system to be alkaline, that's a lie. We will introduce a lie detector test here. It's a lie. Because we, if you take, let's say, some of those uh, foods that are basic or acidic, let's say like the lemon that is actually victimized for being acidic all the time, and that those people who have gastritis should never take lemons because they will go into hyperacidity. Acidic foods will mess up your stomach. It's another lie. So let's take, for example, that lemon that you consider acidic, or let's say that that's soda. So you take a lemon that is slightly acidic, and then that lemon, you take it. By the time that lemon is getting to the stomach, is it still acidic? Yes, because your stomach pH is still acidic, okay? But by the time this lemon is getting into your small intestines for absorption, is it still acidic when the pH of the small intestines is basic. Is it? Are you seeing where I'm coming from? So when you tell me that if I take bicarbonates, I will end up absorbing bicarbonates to make my pH around the cells alkaline. So basically my blood pH will be alkaline. You're lying to me uh, in broad daylight because you're telling me that I will take bicarbonates and absorb bicarbonates. But reality is this bicarbonate, the first encounter, it will be an acid. Therefore, there will be neutralization. That bicarbonate does not exist anymore. When it gets in contact with the HCl in the stomach, it is not a bicarbonate anymore. So your alkaline foods, once they get into the stomach, they encounter an acidic environment. There will be a reaction. Do you need rocket science to understand acid and base reactions? We don't. So no single diet. And by the way, it's not about the pH of the foods that make the foods healthy or that make the foods protect us. It is the nutritional value of these foods. Do they have amino acids in form of proteins? Do they have carbohydrates in form of fiber? Do they have fats, essential fats? If they don't, whether they are alkaline or acidic, they are useless foods. Feed your system with nutrient-dense foods and not a balanced diet. A balanced diet is a creation of the food industry. Your body is not interested in how much food you're eating. It is interested in how much nutrients are present in that food that you're eating. So somebody who just ate eggs plus the yolks or the liver with vegetables and an avocado is way better than somebody who took a whole load of ugali plus two pieces of meat and some vegetables. So when you're told to eat a balanced diet, ask that gentleman one question. How will my body know that what I've put on this plate is the balanced diet because the body will ask for what it needs according to the deficiency. So how will I know that my body needs vitamin D in this equal amount? How will I know how much the body will absorb from the food that I've eaten? Therefore, trying to focus or trying to condition your body to think that what you put on that plate is the balanced diet is useless. That is one. Number two, how can it be a balanced diet when we have one, one macronutrient being more than the other? Look at most people. You eat ugali plus vegetables. Others eat vegetables plus ugali, which means one is the bigger portion. So how is it balanced? <clears throat> you cannot dictate what the body wants. The body knows what to do. Feed it with nutrient-dense foods. It will take the nutrients for that food and it will use that to balance hormones. It will use that to heal. It will use that to activate every system and repair every worn-out tissue in your system. And that's how the body is. So use nutrients 
that work with the body, not against the body. So as you eat that acidic food, by the time it's getting to be absorbed in the small intestine, it's not acidic anymore. Number two on this uh, alkaline diet, we said the body has different pH. In the stomach is highly acidic. As it gets into the uh, duodenum and the small intestine, the pancreas is producing bicarbonate ions. Why? Because these bicarbonate ions are the ones that are supposed to neutralize the acid that is coming with food from the stomach. So it's neutralizing that. So, as, so you're trying to tell us that the body does not know what it's doing. It is actually trying to tell the system, don't bring an acid into the small intestine because this here is an, a basic environment. If you bring acids here, you will create a wound here, and that's the duodenal ulcer. You will bring me issues here, and that is inflammatory bowel syndrome or ulcerative colitis. I'm already telling you how to fix those things. Simply make sure that the body is fed in the with the nutrients it deserves. So the bicarbonates that are coming from the pancreas are the ones that neutralize any slight acid that is coming with food into the small intestine. So by the time you're bringing that food into the small intestines for absorption, it is neither alkaline anymore as you took it, it is neither acidic as you took it because the pH has changed already from the gut and now it's changing to basic and as it ends into the exit, the large intestines are acidic also. So again, another change of pH. So what are you telling me when you tell me if I eat alkaline diets, they will actually make my pH in the system alkaline? Another good lie. Another good lie. So wake up. If you want to be safe, concentrate on whole foods, concentrate on walking and exercise, concentrate on sleeping, ease stress, enjoy the sun, take cold showers. It's that simple. The diet, rehydration with water and salt, exercise in form of walking, sleep or rest, is stress in your system and then tell me about how bad your system is because the system is designed to actually fix you so fix it and then it will fix you good so as we continue let me just finish this up so let me uh, read to you some of the alkaline foods that exist and that you don't know so these are the foods that you're told when you eat these ones you're going to make the vegans like when you eat these you're going to make your system alkaline and therefore you're going to kill cancer <laughs> duck and green leafy vegetables so the spinach, the kale, the, the, the merenda, the whatever they are here under duck and green leafy vegetables number two is the lentils now most of the times I discourage you from eating the grains because plants produce anti-nutrients and unless you are soaking these lentils properly and again unless you have nutrient deficiencies that directly require you to eat the lentils don't, stay away from the grains soy products again are part of the alkaline diets, but the so soy products, we already said we are not eating any soy because soy is a problem to our system. By the way, soy was never a problem uh, earlier because soy is a plant-based estrogen. The problem came in when they started spraying this soy with the glyphosates uh, and those herbicides. And then they, they actually uh, made the soy to be resistant to these herbicides. When they did that, they altered the structure of the nutrients and the starch in these products, in these foods. And that became a serious problem. So this soy let it go. Millet is part of the alkaline foods. Amaranth. And millet and amaranth, when they mix together and you form, you make that uji or that, uh, that uji for your child, they are very good. So millet, amaranth. We also have the almonds, the almond nuts. And we have the, uh, the most of the seeds, the chia seeds, the black cotton seeds and all that are actually present in the alkaline diets. The most uh, interesting one is the fruits. Most fruits are actually alkaline. But you see, for fruits for us, we said no fruits because of the sugar. And the modern fruits are actually highly adulterated. So you simply should avoid the fruits uh, if you're trying to lose weight, to recover from chronic conditions, and to prevent yourself or lead a healthy life, except an avocado, okay? Also, in the alkaline diets, uh, what else do you have? I think those are the best ones uh, and the most commonly consumed. But this is the point. On the acidic foods, we have all that have sulfur, that have chlorine and they have phosphorus. So sulfur, chlorine, and phosphorus. If you realize, this is basically the protein diets, right? Because the ones that have the sulfur and the nitrite, ni nitrates and the, and the chlorine, okay? But meat is there. Of course, as number one on the list, meat has to be present. We have the refined sugar, which is, so you see now, 
sugar is already acidic even before it's converted to more acids. We also have hybridized wheat. Now, hybridized wheat is the problem because the modern wheat that we are consuming is totally hybridized. The structure of the starch in it is actually altered and converted to GMO. Uh, the gluten in it is actually hybridized and that brought a lot of problems because when you eat wheat, we all know, when you eat your chapati and tea in the morning, two hours down the line, you're bloated but you're yawning, you want more because of the addiction that comes with wheat. Okay, the gastritis is going to disturb you so you'll need an omeprazole. And then the brain fogging, you start losing memory just because you ate wheat. You're trying to concentrate, nothing is happening. So drop bread, drop mandazis, drop the pasta, drop the spaghetti, stop eating chapati, let them go. And then we also have uh, caffeine, most of the caffeinated drinks, the coffee, uh, the energy drinks that you take all the time, those are acidic. Don't forget soda is here also. Okay? Yes. Then we also have uh, alcohol and tobacco. Those are acidic. Uh, they are not foods, of course, but they are acidic things that can actually mess up your system. And then we have the grains and the legumes. Also, the legumes are also here. Okay? So remember, grains are also existing on the other side in form of lentils. Okay? Alkalines. So there are foods also that have both the pH. They can experience. Most people, if you eat tomatoes, you can either get an acidic environment or a basic environment, depending on how your gut is. So those that exhibit all the pH on an extreme scale is the tomatoes. They experience both alkaline and basic uh, pH. We also have the bell peppers. We also have the eggplant and the Irish potato. Now you know. You know the acidic foods that you mostly consume. Now you know the basic foods that you mostly consume. Mm. Good. So these are the questions that I'm asked most often when I'm talking about the alkaline diets and all this. Question one, do alkaline diets work? Now, do you think they work? <laughs> so I'll ask you these questions and I need you to answer me because now you're a better doctor than I am through this live. So number one, do you think alkaline diets work? Do you? Answers that I'm seeing here is already no, no, no from Abdul Aziz, no from Carol, no from Shiro M. Shiko is saying somehow, Shiko, now you either or, let it be for the politicians. For us, you either here or there. Be decisive on dietary matters and your health. Take a bold stand. Okay? Simply either no or at least Annabel says not sure. So that's basically, I don't know what I'm saying, but again, we'll answer that. No, no. So yes, the answer is, if you're trying to use alkaline diets to get an alkaline pH to solve your problems in form of diseases, they will not work. And the answer is very simple. We already say that the body exists in different pH levels, from the mouth, the stomach, the small intestine to the large intestine. So by the time that food is being absorbed, it's not the same food that you eat. I like people like Pioneer who just come on in and say, your explanation is wrong. Pioneer, I hope that you can stick on this live to the end and I request that you come in so that you can share your views. We are way beyond this nonsense of telling people, you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong just because you want to feel right. Bring a debate because here is where people have brains. And sometimes when you post a comment, you might look as though you're the only person who doesn't have a brain. So start using that brain to make sense. Don't just occupy space. Don't sit on people's lives. Just say things that don't make sense. Why would you just put a statement? That explanation is wrong. Bring your debate. Tell us, this is my explanation. Request to be my guest. I bring you in. We have a debate. My friend, don't be an emotional boy, my friend. Come on. Come on. We fast here. When we fast, we clear emotions. <laughs> this is a sign that you've never fasted, gentlemen. At least start with an eight-hour fast. Eight hours between your meals, bro. Don't you think that is making sense? I'm glad that I read your comment, Pioneer. You're a pioneer of what, by the way? <laughs> eh? Mr. Pioneer, come back. Let's have a conversation. I need you to educate my audience because this is the best audience ever. We have brains here. There are doctors here, uh, the medical officers. We have pharmacists here. We have pharmaceutical technologists. We have lab technologists. We have nutritionists on this board. We have nurses. But you come on this platform, you have a very good platform to market your idea. But guess what you do? You decide to pour your estrogens on this platform. <laughs> Man, I wish, this, I wish I was starting this live today. Because I would have 
felt broken with that comment, my gentleman. Oh my God. I am so heartbroken because Tonya said this explanation is wrong. I will, hey, hey, my friend, I have existed for more than one and a half years now, doing the same things, posting positive energy and doing this over and over again. I am good at what I do. Okay, so make sure that you stick around until the end of the conversation, pioneer, so that we get to have this conversation with you. Because we need to make sure that these people are educated through your information. So don't hold back that information. Bring it on board. We will know how to go about it, okay? Good. So, one, do alkaline diets work? We already answered that question. And, uh, of course, we've said that acidic pH 5.5 is where all the diseases and the cancer and the fungal infections survive. But the question is this. If you're trying to give an argument about those, uh, 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 the alkaline diet, simply look at it this way. Proteins, when they are breaking down, they are amino acids. So we absorb amino acids. Don't absorb meat. When you eat meat, you absorb amino acids. Underline the word acids. You absorb amino acids. So if you tell me you want a basic environment in my system, you are basically telling me not to eat meat. Where will I get the amino acids to form amino acid uh, neurotransmitters and hormones? Where will I get the amino acids to form structural proteins that will repair my muscles? Where will I get them from? That is another question that you have to ask you if you are telling me to go for the vegan diets. Number two, your DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. <laughs> your DNA is acidic. So you are telling me if I make my environment to be basic, nothing will actually work for me, including my DNA. That A is for acid. <laughs> so allow me to know if there is a D and B basic okay so at least let's be let's be let's be generous but let's also make sense when you're trying to share information so if you're telling me to, to stop eating these other foods because i have a problem with when the vegan diets uh people the ones who support the vegan diet start telling us that meat is bad and you should not eat meat and meat will stay in your stomach for eight hours without digestion so they are actually focusing the energy on demonizing meat instead of focusing the energy on telling me the benefits of their vegan diets once you start focusing your energy on telling me to stop what I've been eating so that I can buy your idea, I started thinking, oh, oh, <laughs> we are not okay here. Please tell me, these are the benefits of alkaline diets. This is how they work. This is how they get into the system and make the system alkaline. I will start buying your idea. But if you come to me and start telling me, hey, you know, you, you know your father is the problem. Your father is the problem. I'm like, ah, where is the problem? Where is the... <laughs> okay, so don't demonize other diets to market other diets. We don't demonize salt so that we can market sugar. Don't do that. That's the food industry menace. We want to actually tell people that if sugar is the best, it's because it does this and this and this and this is how it works. And then now I encourage you to eat sugar instead of telling you to eat salt and not to eat these other ones. Okay? So that's the best thing to do. Number two question. But even before I go to number two question. So that was just me explaining to you how our system takes foods. We absorb amino acids, which are acids. Our DNA is acidic. And also, our kidneys need an acidic environment to function. Why? Because urine is acidic. Do you know why urine is slightly acidic? Because bacteria in the bladder, in the urethra, and in the ureters, they cannot survive under acidic pH. So that urine has to be acidic so that it clears the bacteria that want to survive in that environment. So the body is designed perfectly. Okay? imagine that imagine if your urine came out alkaline every bacteria that survives in an acidic environment will actually conquer you because that acid is no in the basic environment will actually conquer you because that acid is coming in to clear the bacteria that are basically lining that wall that can cause your urinary tract infection so your kidneys need it you also need the acidic environment so that you can actually reabsorb potassium to help your heart in functioning you actually need then a, a, a slightly acidic environment to send calcium into the bones. Do you remember when you said when you get into alkalosis, you actually start thing to bone resorption, to just bring bone, uh, the calcium from the bone back into the blood. And once you've retained or you've taken back your normalcy, the homeostasis, this calcium has nowhere to go. So it has to be pumped into the same, same bones to form that scarring on the bones. It has to be sent into the blood vessels, the heart, the kidneys, and all over the body, including the eye, to bring you the cataracts. So are we learning something here now? So simply remember this, for you to live a healthy life, because we are almost closing up, for you to lead a healthy life, number one, diet is very important. 
don't concentrate on ah carnivore diets don't concentrate on uh, vegan diets or whatever you can actually combine them because your body is the one that speaks to you so your body will decide what you do best with so simply combine the vegetable diets to get the nutrition from the vegetables the vitamins uh, the micronutrients to get also uh, <coughs> the, even the, 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 that acidic ph that you want if at all you are a vegan diet or the, the alkaline ph that you want so eat vegetables to get the fiber get the vitamins and other minerals from that vegetable okay it's the the, the the meats so that you get the essential amino acids to make hormones and neurotransmitters and to repair your muscles so enjoy the organ meats enjoy all meats red and white make them fatty because we don't want to overeat protein because when you overeat protein you will end up converting it to glucose and that's a problem thank you so much blessed eat the nuts to get the minerals and the fats from the nuts eat avocados the only fruit because it has all the micronutrients that you need from a fruit and then fast at least give your gut time to digest absorb assimilate and rest now cleans up once you do that now you can bring in new food and then push a prolonged fast also so that you clean your cells from any toxins that you've taken through these diets and then rehydrate with water and add salt because too much hydration you will end up getting dehydrated add a pinch of salt in your drinking water each and every time you drink that water add a pinch of salt and then make sure that your stress levels are near zero lower stress in your life if there's a spouse stressing you please press next if your job or your boss is stressing you you can do better your health is your first wealth your job is not your first wealth your health is your first wealth ease the stress so that you ease the cortisol and your body can easily adapt enjoy natural therapies like walking barefoot like enjoying the sun like taking cold showers like fasting fasting is free you will save a lot of money through fasting actually you don't need to eat every time and then sleep to rest but sleep after an exercise go and possibly take a walk go to the gym and lift about three times a week have a rest in between and sleep because you gain much when you're resting than when you're working out that's all you need that's all you need good let's bring in some people and i hope uh, we can remember this gentleman why do they always run away when you ask them to request to come in they always take the exit <laughs> the nearest exit when you just ask them to come in for conversation they take the nearest exit so let's do this uh, this gentleman is not coming in i uh, hope you can come in and have a discussion with us so you can gain weight by eating too much protein since it turns into glucose yes if you eat red meat this, the, the system lies to you by telling you you should eat red meat the lean red meat lean one they tell you that but you see when you eat the lean meat you end up overeating it that's why i told i told you to always eat uh to always eat uh the fatty meats because fat is satiety and fat does not spike insulin fat will make you not to overeat the protein once you do that period you're good to go enjoy your meat now before you forget there was a question that was asked about the joint pains and meat red meat does not cause you joint pains joint pain is basically arthritis and arthritis is inflammation of the joints the three foods that cause inflammation seed oils wheat products and sugar in all forms including fruits and honey the most interesting part about arthritis is when you eat that fruit you absorb fructose fructose is the cells don't know how to utilize fructose so fructose will be carried all the way to the liver and it will be converted to triglycerides those are fats don't confuse triglycerides with cholesterol they are different that is one channel so you start being fat you will add weight you start exerting a lot of pressure to your joints that is arthritis number 2 there is an enzyme that is a scavenger in the liver that converts fructose to uric acid the same same sugar is killing your kidneys so when you're taking sugar you're killing your kidneys when you kill your kidneys you will have a problem with the excretion of uric acid now remember this you're eating fruits you're getting fructose 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 is being converted to uric acid so the levels of uric acid in blood starts going up but uric acid has never been a problem because it can be excreted through urine through the kidneys the problem is this same same sugar kills the kidneys therefore excretion of this uric acid becomes a problem now guess what this uric acid will be deposited in the joints and when it crystallizes it brings you inflammation that is what you call gouty arthritis so did you hear me mention meat anywhere yes meat has uric acid in form of purines but meat cannot 
cause you uh, uh, joint problems because meat does not affect your kidneys because uric acid in joints that causes you inflammation is not an intake problem is an exit problem so if you inhibit the exit you actually raise the amount of uric acid in your system and you become a problem in your joints so therefore don't blame red meat for what fruits and sugar cost you simply drop those and you start recovering good uh, this is the I don't know what your, what your name is. There's a lot of initials. Yes, how are you? You're live on air. Is it DRN or something? What, what is yeah. your name? <laughs> how is you? I'm good. What is your name, sir? Um, Dr. Emmanuel. Ah, Dr. Emmanuel. Yeah, sure. I always have yeah, been following uh, your live and I'm really inspired to them. Man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming along, bro. Uh, this is Dr. Lewis. This is what we do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So welcome on board all through. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Man, I'm happy to have one doctor coming in with a bold stand and saying that we inspire them. You know what I preach is not new. I don't preach anything new. He can actually give you a test. I don't preach anything new. I say things sure, that, do, sure. that all of us definitely had questions in the system, but we'd never question these things because when you question a professor, you now have another year of surviving in that medical school. That's a lot of money, my friend. Anyway, thank you so much, Dr. Ari, for coming through, exactly. and I hope you'll stick around for some time so that you can uh, actually help us educate the masses. That is it. That's why we're helping each other together. Man, I appreciate it. I'll get to you uh, through your uh, your DM. Thanks, I appreciate it. Good, good, good. It's always a pleasure. This is the first. No, so sometimes back we had another nurse who came in and uh, we were talking about diabetes. I don't know if you guys remember. Those who have been here for the longest period of time, they know. So the nurse who came in. And she was arguing about insulin therapy. And no, insulin therapy has helped a lot of people. I am in the UK. My husband is a, a doctor. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, bring your husband on board, please. We cannot have this argument which is full of emotions. Do you remember those days when we used to do the lives on Monday mornings? And then when, when it got hotter, she actually told me, you don't know what you're talking about because my husband has been treating people from diabetes using insulin therapy for the longest period of time. I'm like, ah, 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 ah. I had to kick her out, and then you started complaining. Oh, doctor, why have you kicked her out? I'm like, ah, that energy is too much. Somebody asked, does salty environment cause gouty arthritis? I just explained gouty arthritis. And of course, salt plays no role in gouty arthritis. Actually, salt will help you get hydration. Once you get hydrated, of course, you start uh, killing this. And by the way, salt is very important in actually trying to help you... Uh, with sugar cravings. That's why when you're fasting for the long fast for the first time, simply enjoy the salt and water because it will help you walk along. You just go, go through the hunger pumps. That's what you need. Salt is very important, but salt does not cause you any problem. You can exceed salt through sweat, through tears, through saliva, and through urine. Those four. But if you ever exceed sugar through urine, is a disease. We call it... <laughs> hey! Glucosuria, my friend, the disease. So, sugar. Yes, Jeff, how are you? Hey, how are you? Ugambachi. Uh, yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, sir. Where are you talking to us from? Uh, I'm down in South Africa. Ah, welcome to the Health and Wellness Sport. You're live on air. Yeah, yeah. You know, I follow your your posts a lot. Okay. On what and, platform? Uh, uh, before, yes, before I ask my question, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to share my experiences. My life changed ever since I started watching your, your videos. You know, I, I always had problems with uh, gout every January because of the feasting in December and uh, you know, a lot of drinking, a lot of whatever, you know, yeah. a lot of pasta, you know, just feasting, yeah. you know, a lot of glucose, you know, during December. And I used to have serious bouts with 
gout in January, and it started to get worse yeah. because I would have them the bounce for three days, and then you know uh, it would go. But now uh, this other year, it started to be very serious. I could not I could not get rid of the gout until February. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, when I came across your videos, I realized uh, I started following. One thing that I followed was uh, that uh, uh, I have to cut down on sugar. I have to cut down on these oils, the industrial oils mm -hmm. you buy, we put in really, yeah. you know. And I did that, and that's what saved me. And I stopped taking these with days the alcohol, like. Like like uh, you know bottles beer actually I started taking wine yeah and I have never had a battle with with gout uh, ever since Good. you know I used to have very tired painful feet and very itchy and they were even peeling off the skin was peeling off but now uh, my skin is back you know and this that I'm saying here is the real truth and I've been sharing with my friends telling them how I beat gout never to come back again i changed my lifestyle yeah. you say it has to be a change in your lifestyle, not just a one-off yeah you have to maintain and then we are coupled with uh, exercise and the simple exercise you recommend is just walking yes you know and the i am 54 you know so i i don't have to go to the gym for a six pack here i don't have to wake up too hard because the i i i followed very well that you know when you are at my age or your bones, your muscles are weak, so you might be hurting yourself yeah. you're working out like a weak year old or thirty year old. So the best exercise is walking. So I wanted to confess that number one, that changed up to now. I've oh, never so. had a bout without again. We celebrate number yourself. two, yeah. I was having very bad breath. I was having bad breath for many years. Yeah. For over fifteen years. Wow. You know, and I went to different dentists. I, you know, I did do this root canal, I did what, I did what, but I could not eat. My teeth kept rotting. Yeah. But the moment I started using salt, you know, I just started using salt. You had a video about salt. Yes. Sir. Everything is gone. Yes. Sir. Is gone. And I've been preaching, and everything is gone. I don't have to visit the dentist. Maybe I'll just go to close up some cavities, and then I do four things to make sure there's no fermentation. But I do follow your post and. Ever since I started using salt, yeah. it's months now since I watched your video. My breath is okay. Even when I wake up, I, I, I have to speak to someone very close after just waking up. I know. And I'm amazed. I can tell you that <laughs> I can tell you that I've been having bad breath since I was in my thirties. Wow. And I just beat it just months ago after watching your video. Now I've been telling people about this. Old people, young people, if I see someone is complaining of cheetah say abandoned to first. Start using soap. Period. People have been coming back to me, telling me that this guy told me to abandon. I used to have blood in my gums. What? What? It all went away because I've been brushing with soap. So those are the two things I wanted to share with you. Wow. Uh, to thank you for 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 the life saving messages that you put on TikTok. You know, TikTok is not just a political tool that has opened people's eyes about yeah. what is happening in Palestine. Yeah. Know? It is also uh, an eye opener for, for for you know we have been cheated you know by you know you know I remember I started I, I am an advertiser yeah I am in the advertising industry and you know when we are starting off in the, in the nineties I I when I go to a lawyer's office or a doctor's office they will tell me no we are doctors or lawyers we don't advertise yeah. you know we are not commercial we are we are medical we are we are judicial we don't advertise but guess what yeah lawyers are advertising. You Mind. see them on TV. Doctors are, uh, are pushing commercial brands. Things that were forbidden 20 years or 30 years ago. Yeah. Okay? So when you started to say that some of these people have been bought off to come up with fake researches and stuff like that, I started to look back. I've been in this advertising business and I see, I say, oh yeah, this gentleman is saying the truth. Yep. These people have been bought off to sell lies and they hook people on these medicines, on these products, and they're making billions. And some of them have already turned into trillion uh, uh, dollar companies as we speak. Yeah. So I wanted to thank you and ask you to please continue uh, uh, with this. And uh, I know you should be ready. You might be shut down when these people start to see that what you're saying might be.
that it will change people's lives and they to start eating into their profits in the future. Because, you know, there's this video I like that you put out. To be sugar consumers, you know, so that when they grow up, they should already be hooked and then they'll pass it on. So they are working on the young. Yes. You know, so anyway, I wanted to thank you so much for this, uh, for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for, for, for the, for the mouth hygiene and for the gout. You know, at my age, a lot of friends, they suffer from these things and I've been advised. Thank you so much for that one. This has been life changing for me, you know. Now, I wanted to ask you a question. I was talking to a friend uh, after advising so many people about brushing your teeth with soap. Yeah. Now, uh, one friend uh, said, no, uh, I have hypertension. Mm -hmm. So I've already been warned at the hospitals that I cannot use soap. Because the salt is bad, it can, it can raise my blood pressure or my sugar or something. Yes. That is it's bad. Is it true that uh, brushing with salt for those who have hypertension, uh, is it bad for them? Uh, does salt affect them? Is it absorbed through the gums or whatever? I don't know. Okay, maybe you can uh, elaborate on that. Good. Thank you so much. First of all, we celebrate you. I know most of my people, most of my uh, followers want to kiss in the morning. <laughs> but that bad and foul <laughs> smell that comes in your mouth when you're waking up cannot allow you to even look at that person and you want to kiss them in the morning. <laughs> that is one. <laughs> Number two. Uh, these people lie to us about us not cutting trees, but they still go ahead and make activated commercial toothpaste. I always ask where do they get the trees from. Number three. I am so glad that you heal from your gout. And people still think that gout yes. is a chronic condition and is uh, degenerate. It's actually uh, progressive, and you cannot reverse it. You can reverse yes. gout without taking any medication. So we appreciate you because exactly. you took your health serious Thank and you're back in order, bro. Exactly. Thank you. And one other thing is that I, uh, you know, the most thing that you get when you're suffering from gout, a lot of people will be circulating this information that you have to stay away from the meat and stuff like that. Yeah. And when you say it, no. Uh, you need meat for muscle growth or muscle maintenance in your body, especially when you're growing up. You need protein. Yeah. And you know, I have been, I'm back on eating meat. I eat meat the way I want. Enjoy it. And I don't have problems with gout. Yes, no problems with joints. I, I have eggs every morning. Yeah. Uh, you know, my dad was like, no eggs to contribute to blood pressure. So I've been having eggs every morning. I make sure I have a tray of eggs. Yeah. And I am enjoying the protein and that it's not affecting me. It's not affecting me. And that, that's another one thing I wanted to add on that. Yeah. And you're a true follower. So let me answer your two questions. Number one, uh, is this yes. one that uh, yes. your dad started selling you fear because he had already bought fear from the health system. Cholesterol has never been a problem. Cholesterol cannot yes. cause you hypertension. What causes you problems is sugar, seed oils, and wheat products. Cholesterol just comes in to fix the problem that is inflammation in the system. But we blame cholesterol for what sugar costs us. So if you clear cholesterol but you don't clear the sugar, you're wasting time. Number two, on the salt causing hypertension, that is a serious lie. There is something called the RAS mm -hmm. system, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. This is a system that the kidney uses to actually neutralize or normalize your blood pressure. Now, the one who actually came up with that system is a professor called Gaiton, and he went ahead and wrote the pharmacology textbooks that we use in medical courses and in pharmacy courses. But this gentleman was very clear, only that we never, uh, it was never taken serious. So they took a very small portion of his study and put it in the syllabus to brainwash the masses so that they can justify sugar and demonize salt. Now, sugar kills the kidneys. Once sugar kills the kidneys, you are yes. unable to control blood pressure because the kidneys are the ones that control blood pressure. But they wanted that sugar to continue because 90 and up to 99% of food industry products are loaded with sugar. So if they demonize sugar, you can imagine how many food industries will go into closure. So they cannot allow that. And they know, again, if you continue eating sugar and the foods that are coming from the industries, seven years down the line, you'll go back to find solutions to the big farmer. So they create the problem and then they create the solution. So this is the reality. Salt can, get, can leave the body through urine, it can leave the body through sweat, it can leave the body through saliva and through tears. Those are four exits of salt. But salt can only get through into the body through the mouth. So one, one entry and four exits. So there is no way you can overeat salt because your taste buds cannot allow you to overeat salt. That is one. 
Number two, if you eat that much salt, the, it's the role of the kidneys to excrete excess of it. So the kidneys will clear it through urine. Okay? Therefore, yes. you cannot get into hypertensive state just because you ate salt. The problem is not in eating the salt. The problem is the organ that excretes salt, if it is altered or destroyed, which is the kidney, and that organ is destroyed by sugar. So if we want to actually enjoy salt, we have to drop the sugar. Because the sugar will actually hinder our excretion of salt. So salt has never and will never cause you hypertension. What causes hypertension is the sugar. So stop demonizing salt to enjoy sugar. Again, salt will only cause up to one or two uh, millimeters of mercury increase in blood pressure if at all you have functional kidneys. So unless you're confirmed to be stage four or stage five, kidney failure when you're on dialysis or you're in, where you're in, when you are awaiting a transplant, that's the only time you avoid salt because you cannot excrete it from the system and that's when it starts uh, raising your blood pressure. But when you have functional kidneys, yeah. why would you avoid salt when the kidneys have a role of excreting excess salt in the system? And then they have a role of absorbing or reabsorbing salt if in the system salt is less. So don't fall for that lie. Enjoy your salt and drop the sugar. Thank you so much. I, I, I really would like to urge you a video specifically on this topic good so uh, that i can share uh, with my friend i will actually and maybe you might gain a new follower i will actually do that video i assure you i'll do that video and actually this one will mm. also be posted on that platform very soon so just relax i'll do that video and i'll make sure that exactly. you get the masses because i know so many people who are suffering from hypertension have been told already to avoid salt because salt is their enemy but uh -huh. they have not been told to avoid sugar they are told to eat brown bread Yes. They are told to keep, to keep on eating a soda. They are told to take this size of ugali because of the plate of the diabetic plate and the nutritional yes. plate. They are told to continue eating fruits. All that is sugar, but they are being told to avoid salt. Yes. That is a lie that has to be yes. actually changed and we will start by doing a serious video about it and we will make you understand it. Yes. Good. Thank you thank so much, you so sir. Much. I will appreciate that. Ah, man, thank thank you. you. Have a good night. Okay, have a good, good. night thank too, you so sir. Much. Thank you so much. Man, that was positive vibration. Positive vibration from South Africa. Let's do two more people before we call it a night. I'm going to Traore, Marian, and then uh, Jaylene, then we call it a night. By the way, I was almost beaten for telling a doc that HDL and LDL aren't cholesterol. Rather, they are carriers. This is Blackman King. Yes. HDL and LDL are not types of cholesterol, they are carriers of cholesterol. So you cannot blame the vehicles that carry cholesterol. You cannot. They are carriers of cholesterol. There's only one type of cholesterol. When you carry it from the liver towards the inflamed side, that is LDL, the one that they call the dangerous cholesterol. When you carry it from the liver back, uh, from the inflamed sides back to the liver, that is HDL. Those are vehicles. Those are not types of cholesterol. Yes, Marian. Marian, how are you? Marian is uh, requested to be on live, uh, but she's not coming in. So we'll move to Traore. Oh, man. Again, don't forget that on 17th all the way to 26th of this month, we are going to Nairobi for the physical consultations. Use the contact that is posted on the platform that is pinned. If you've not seen it, it is 0707-074722. 0707-074722. That is our consultation contact. Use that contact to book an online appointment. You can also use it to book a physical appointment that is going to happen from 17th all the way to 26th of this month. Again, there's a weight loss group that is starting from 15th of this month, going for three months. If you're struggling with weight and you want to lose weight in a healthy way, Kindly go ahead and use that contact. Mickey has, has pinned it on uh, TikTok. On YouTube, I've pinned it. It's health and wellness sport at 0707-074722. Join that weight loss. So use that contact to book your space and your, post, uh, your position in that uh, weight loss group. So thank you so much for that. I also have a Telegram channel that is called health and wellness sport. Join in. My YouTube channel is health and wellness sport. Don't miss. Just go there and click that subscription button because we want to grow at a very alarming rate so that they start listening. And before they bring down this channel, you should have watched those videos, learned and learned and relearned. 
use those videos before they are pulled down. Yes, uh, Traore. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Commercial toothpaste ni bure. Bure da biza. Nisi ni biko na biko ya dina ya panya. Una niki tumi ya toothpaste ni kwa na skia. Ndomo ina kuwa na kuwa very dry ribs. Yeah. Lagi ni wira ni yaza kumi ya chumbi na kuwa very fresh. The whole day so. Thank you so much. So let me tell you something about this commercial toothpaste. Number one, commercial toothpaste have fluoride. That fluoride will cause uh -huh. calcification of your pineal gland. And that will start causing you loss of sleep. That is one. Number two, on that commercial toothpaste, it's actually written on a warning that says do not use it in children below six years. But we use them from the time we are two years. And then they say, if you ingest more than enough or more than it's supposed to be used for brushing, of which they have not told you how much should be used for brushing, you should contact a poison center. In Kenya, the poison center is the pharmacy and poisons board, I suppose. So if it's the pharmacy and poisons board, imagine going to report to the pharmacy and poisons board that I use this commercial toothpaste and it brought me problems. You will wait for a whole year before you get any response, if at all you're lucky to get one. Number three. These people are very bright. When they heard us talking about fluoridated toothpaste causing liver problems and causing a lack of sleep, they designed a toothpaste that is activated charcoal. They even colored it black. And now everybody has run to that toothpaste thinking that that is activated charcoal. My friend, there is no charcoal in that toothpaste. Run away from it. Run away from commercial toothpaste. And if at all you've never tried salt, simply take salt, dissolve it in water, or take salt on a toothbrush and use it to brush your teeth tonight. And if you wake up tomorrow with a filthy or foul mouth, please tell us, give us a testimony here about that. Again, remember, when you brush it with that, uh, that uh, commercial toothpaste, in the morning you'll wake up with a very, very filthy mouth with a lot of bowel film in your mouth because you actually destroy the bacteria in your mouth. And this bacteria exists to help you digest food, to help you maintain the pH of the mouth, to help you actually clean the system in your mouth. So therefore, when you use that activated, uh, yeah, that, that, that uh, commercial toothpaste, or when you use that commercial mouthwash, I see all of you gargling mouthwashes. You're actually going to destabilize the bacteria in your mouth, and you'll end up having a lot of problems in future. So simply, if you have a bad or small or foul smell in your mouth, go to the dentist and see if you have the, kid, the, the, the tonsil stones. Let them get removed. Start using salt to brush your teeth. And then just go on a one meal a day or two meals a day. And then reduce on the amounts of carbohydrates because when you eat those carbohydrates and the sugars, these are the foods that the bacteria in your mouth use to ferment to give you the acids that actually leach out the enamel in your tooth. Remember, enamel is basically calcium. So they leach that calcium out of your tooth and you start having tooth decay. So again from within, when you eat those sugars, you start messing your tooth from within because the sugar starts to kill the root of the tooth. Now you start having dental decay and oral problems. You start having halitosis, which is basically a very foul smell in your mouth. Start using salt. Thank you so much. Keep going, Trore. Yes. Now you faint. Bro, Alafu, they are very clear. Do you know yeah. what they say about eggs, bro? Yeah. Where I'm working right now, they tell me that if I if you feed children with eggs, one, they will have delayed speech, and number two, they will delay walking. So that is a problem because they have been brainwashed and conditioned to think that eggs for children. And now you can imagine being set up from the way you started being a child. This child grows up thinking that eggs are very bad to them, eggs are the delay speech in children, eggs will delay walking in children, and as you grow older, you're told if you eat eggs, you'll get cholesterol. When you get cholesterol, you have, you'll have hypertension and heart attack. Bro, they lie to you from the time you're a young kid until you get into your grave. Since childhood, Yeah, 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 yeah. Enjoy your eggs and eat them plenty. Ata iso sita ongeza zifike nane. I appreciate, bro. Keep spreading our gospel all over, bro. We appreciate that you're part of us. 
Thank you very much. Asante sana usiku mwema bro. Wow, these are the test. I did not pay anybody. How can I even pay somebody in South Africa? How can I pay these gentlemen by just selecting them randomly? This is the last person that I'm doing tonight for before we call it a night. I was take Jaylin. Uh-huh. <laughs> so your child is told to drop eggs because they will delay speech. But the same same child is told to continue drinking soda and the and the those drinks that will boost their blood and keep eating sweets and biscuits and take those uh, those products that are called the nuts. Mickey knows them very well. The ones that they use for nutrition benefits that have a lot of sugar and soy. And then this child ends up having a very very shrinking brain. Ends up having a lot of estrogen. They cannot erect when they get into teenagehood. They have a lot of estrogen in their system. They get into estrogen dominance. Pimples all over bad skin and hormonal imbalances. So they are told to drop eggs but eat the products. Drop food and eat products. That's the message in the hospitals. So when these kids eat these bad foods, these uh, margarines and all these soy products, they start getting ADHD, attention deficit hyperactive disorders. Then when you get ADHD, guess what is going to happen? There's always a drug for that child for ADHD and anxiety. Now your child is just active, running all over. But they are telling you this is a disease. And when they put it in a syllabus, you believe it. And then they make, it, they make you believe it by selling you the fear. Now there's a drug for that fear. Eh? Jalen. Jalen, how are you? Jalen, you've been here for a minute. I've just brought you in. You're unable to speak. How are you? Good. So Jalen is unable to tell us anything. I think she requested by just chance. Let's talk to the last person then to replace Jalen. And then we call it a night. So guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you for taking your time to just stick around for the last two hours to just have this live. Share this live so that people can watch it. I know how tiresome it is to watch a two-hour live on a public Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes, Teresa. Hey. Did, did some of you request okay. and then sleep? Yes, Teresa, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing fine. I must admit that information is power. Uh-huh. Wow. And uh, at times, they say we, as the Bible says, we keep it very because of lack of information or knowledge. So definitely, I'd like to say, uh, the time I started listening to you, that is when I got a breakthrough in terms of our uh, weight loss. Okay. I never thought I would get out of uh, from the weighing from 80 to 70 something now to 69 Ooh. within a span of three months. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. There's a video I saw from you. You were talking about uh, you, you. You're giving information on uh, fasting. Yes. And yes, I would say I thought it was very hard for me to do so. Um, uh, there's one that you gave a challenge of uh, doing. Was it 40, 46, no, 40, 42 40. Yes, I did hours. a forty-two hours. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think that have been. A, a, a success to me. That is what I've. That is what that have been uh, 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 breaking even yeah. for me. So thank you so much. Wow, wow. man! <laughs> Listen to that. Listen to that. Like literally, I man. Listen, you not only did you lose weight, you lost estrogen. Estrogen is a source of emotions anger and all these issues that arise in women including fibroids endometriosis hormonal imbalances infertility weight gain thyroid issues heart disease and weak bones imagine all those being loaded in your fat cells so when you lose weight you not only develop the consistency the discipline and the ability to say no to people who want you to eat crappy foods you actually develop a strong mindset you actually lose the estrogen you actually start looking younger and fitter and that is what we inspire people to do i am so glad that you took a bold stand to just follow what we say i know it is not easy 
I struggled with my own addictions of soda and chapati and I know how difficult it is to reverse these things. But immediately you see yourself losing 1 kg, that is motivation enough to push even harder. So I am proud of you and I hope you continue doing that because this is your new way of living. Health does not stop just because you lost weight. You need to understand that you need to maintain that weight and again your body will start building up healthy weight and that is what we need for health. Thank you so much for coming through and sharing your experience. May God take you through and may you be blessed. I appreciate and celebrate you Teresa. It helps. <laughs> Woo. Ooh. On that, I remember you talking about uh, gym. Eh? Yes. I really had a very long perspective of uh, like I have to go to gym uh, each and every day. Yeah. But I think that was a wrong perception. <laughs> you said we only need one hour in that gym, yeah. which uh, contributes to probably fifteen percent. That is the point. <laughs> of one losing weight. Yeah. You know, I had that mentality that I'll be going to the gym and uh, definitely without even checking on my diet, uh, maybe I'll be able to reach to the to the, to my target. But yes, my eyes were opened, yeah, and I don't take more than one hour at the gym. I don't take I don't go running through that train bill yes. the entire one hour, fifteen minutes. That is what you recommended. I, I think yes, I got helped. Yeah. <laughs> And even even the honesty in your voice tells it all. We don't need you to convince us. The honesty in your voice tells us all that you've gone through. Like, listen, if you're bright, 85% of health is won by the battle of the kitchen. Even if you go to the gym and run on that treadmill a thousand days, it will not happen. But the gym trainers out here have zero knowledge about anatomy, zero knowledge about burning fat and how to burn calories. They will tell you to eat whatever foods they want, the pre-workout and the post-workout, which is just nonsense. And when you go to the gym, you have not gone to the gym to get a chest or to lose weight. You've just gone to the gym to tone and maintain a healthy life. You're actually going to the gym to mimic the activities that we used to do traditionally that we don't do now. Because nobody goes to the shamba to come out with a bicep. Nobody goes to the farm to come up with a big chest. Everybody goes there to do their work. So the gym is designed to bring those activities that we used to be uh, that we used to do traditionally into the present day but we've made a gym to be an effeminate place where we simply go and drink the energy drink so we add sugar to our system we go there to take protein shakes we go there to take videos and we take about 2 hours in the gym i simply wonder why are you in the gym for 2 hours yet you're only targeting 15% of weight loss if at all that is your goal in the gym go fix the kitchen come here and train for 35 to 1 hour and go away And this is these are basics. Once you understand that, and by the way, you will be a better teacher than I am on weight loss matters. Thank you. And that's the beauty about it because ah, thank you so much uh, Teresa. Thank you for looking this out for us in a superb way. I appreciate you. Thank you thank you for your teaching. Listen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I don't call it a night right now, I'll actually destroy it. A good dancer knows when to exit the stage. I'm not saying I'm exiting the stage. We will be here on Friday for another session of health and wellness sport another live don't miss out if you're not on my youtube channel health and wellness sport is your home of healthcare what it does is we glorify god through easing pain and suffering from his people all those testimonies that we are getting are not my doing they are because god put in us a special knowledge to just drop it to you and once you adapt it you heal we bridge the gap between healthcare and the general public we help you break down those jargons in a language that you can understand we help you consume healthcare in a very simplest form and then you can make sane decisions when you decide to actually consume healthcare thank you so much for being part of this live thank you so much for holding up for the last 2 hours and how many minutes and 3 minutes amazing we appreciate you we celebrate each and every one of you we hope that you will be here to support us we hope that one day if this channel is brought down you will still spread our gospel to each and every one of your relatives and your friends make this bigger and better You was faithfully Dr. Lewis Michile from the Health and Wellness Spot. Have a good night, have a good afternoon, have a good morning from wherever you're watching us from and see you on Friday.